if you're going to visit Disney, one of the things you may very well get involved in is pin trading. I love trading pins. So what is it? How do you do it? And how do you look out for fakes so you don't get stuck? Hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified of new ones, and hit the like button as well. Thanks so much. In the past, I've done a couple other videos on pin trading and shown off my collection of pins and some of what I like to collect and keep and how to do it and talked about some of the things to be careful of with pin trading. But I haven't really done a full video that is really dedicated on how to trade pins and how to get started on it and what to look out for and how to make sure you don't get stuck with some bad pins. Having just returned from Walt Disney World, one of the things I love to do is trade pins down there. And you're wanting to get involved in pin trading, but you don't have any pins. Where do you start? Well, you gotta get some pins somewhere. Now, the most obvious place to buy pins, of course, is at Walt Disney World or Disneyland, one of the Disney parks. You can go into one of the stores there and most of the stores sell pins and they've even got whole stores that all they sell is pins. You don't even have to go into a Disney park. You can actually go down to Disney Springs, right in the middle of the marketplace, they've got a big store there that all it sells is pins. That's right, there are hundreds of pins there that you can buy. And let's be honest, when it comes down to it, there are thousands and thousands of pins available. I don't think you'd be exaggerating to say there's probably close to a million different pins. But you want to get some and you want to get started. Well, if you buy the pins at a Disney store, you're going to pay a more expensive price, starting off at $8 or so for the cheapest pins and going up very quickly. You can find pins for $15, $20 just for one pin. They've also got assortments and collections available where you can buy several pins all together for a little bit cheaper price. And if you buy that at the full price of Disney, you're probably going to pay about $5 a pin for about the cheapest pin. Now, I don't know about you, but <laughs> I'm on a budget. I can't afford five bucks a pin. That's a lot of money for my budget. You want to get some pins and you want to get them cheap. So where do you go? eBay, right? Or Amazon? <laughs> no. All the pins that are in big lots on Amazon and eBay are fakes or what's called scrappers. And I'll talk more about those in a little bit. Don't buy your pins to trade on eBay or Amazon. Skip that idea. There are other places that you can buy pins cheaply though. I can actually buy my pins typically for between two and four dollars a pin. That's a pretty good deal actually when you think about the pins. So where do you go to get those? Well if you're in Orlando you can look for a store called the Disney Character Warehouse. There's two of them and they're at the outlet malls and they sell a whole bunch of clothes out merchandise including shirts and hats and souvenirs and other things and of course pins. It's a great place to go to get pins on a discount. You can find things like lanyards, uh, for example, this one with the pin quest. This used to be something that they did in the park where you could buy this lanyard and go on this journey and you could get special pins for it. This was $15, which is about average for a lanyard. I spent $5 for it at the Character Warehouse. And you can get similar bargains on pins themselves. As an example, that was a $17 pin that I bought for six. And it's a neat pin. There's other pins that you could get for, say, $4 for a very nice double pin back Star Wars pin. There's a nice Stormtrooper pin for $3. And they will typically have a stock of pins on sale like this one for 2 bucks. There's your traders. Easy way to get a cheap, inexpensive pin. I bought several of these and then you take them into the park and you trade them. Easy way to get some cheap, inexpensive pins. So that's one way to do it. The other way to get inexpensive pins is to find a reliable buyer online. One that I use often, I highly recommend, is a private group on Facebook called Pinderella Shop exclamation point LLC. Great site, Emily is the lady who runs it. They are real authentic pins and you can buy grab bags or you can actually order individual pins. She does sales once or twice a week and you can order those and they mail them to you. Good prices on pins and they are real authentic pins. So you can either buy a specific pin you want or you can just buy the grab bags and there's your traders. So you're still kind of looking at that Amazon thing and going, oh, but there's 50 pins for 10 bucks there. 
Please don't. The pins that you buy in bulk like that are called scrappers, or they're just plain fake. And they are pins that are not made of the same quality. They're not authentic Disney pins. They're not approved. Um, and if you try to trade them in the parks, they can actually tell you no, because they're not real legitimate pins. Now, many of the cast members don't know the difference, and so they will still trade them. Please don't blame the cast member. They're just doing their job and trying to make you happy. But the truth is, a lot of the lanyards in the parks now are actually filled and half filled with fakes and scrappers anymore. So you've got to be kind of careful. At least for me, I want real pins. I want authentic things. I'd really rather keep it real and put the people who make and produce and sell the fakes out of business. So how do I know that all of these are real pins? How do you tell a fake? Well, I'll actually put a couple links down in the description below for a couple great sites that'll help show you. But let me give you a couple big hints here using a couple of pins that I have that happen to be fakes that I've gotten. Both of these I actually got on my recent trip and just they're normal looking pins. So how do you tell that they're fake? Well, the first easiest way is the weight. Very simply, a fake pin is very light because they're not made of the same quality metal. They'll often be made of cheap aluminum or some other very light, low grade metal. You can put a real pin and a fake pin next to each other and you'll know immediately which one is fake. Now, every now and then, especially if it's a scrapper, it might weigh about the same. A scrapper is basically a pin that Disney looked at and said, it does not meet our standards. It's not a good pin because it's not made right. Well, the company then tried to make money off it anyways. Other ways that you can tell if a pin is fake though is some of the fakes are magnetic. Now, that's not always the case. As an example, this is pretty, Powerful magnet, and these two are definitely fake pins, and you notice it's not picking them up at all. So not every fake pin is magnetic. There are a few that are, but not many. Other ways that you can tell pins are fake though, besides the weight, is just the coloring sometimes. The coloring will look a little off or not quite right. It won't match the original. You can actually sometimes on fake pins see brush strokes where they painted it. Real pins aren't painted that way. They're filled in and then baked. So if you see paint strokes on it, it's a fake. Another easy way to tell a fake though, is actually by looking at the back of the pin. If you pull off that little rubber stopper and you can look right at the pin post and see right off the bat that that one is a fake. Because a real pin will actually have two little studs next to it. As an example, this Kermit car is one that came out of my grab bags from Emily. And if you look close, you can actually see next to the pin that there's two little studs next to it marking that. Well, this one doesn't have it. So there's an easy giveaway right off that it's a fake pin. Real Disney pins have at least one stud. Additionally, real Disney pins are actually riveted into the pin. They're made as part of the pin. They're not going to come loose. This post is actually loose and wiggles because it has been glued on. Real Disney pins are not glued on. So if you've got a loose wiggly post, it's a fake. One other way to tell a real pin from a fake too is... If you look at the back, newer pins have this real designed edge. It may be Mickey heads, it may be Sorcerer hats. There's like three or four different designs. And you will see it come all the way out to the edge. A fake pin may end up short on one side. Now that's not always an indication. And especially if you look at older pins, for example, this figment here, it doesn't have that kind of a back modeled edge. So that's not an easy way to tell all the time, but it's one clue. It also will definitely have the Disney pin trading stamp on it. If it doesn't have the Disney pin trading stamp on it, or if it's misspelled, it's a fake. So please avoid fakes. Don't buy those big lots. You might think you're saving money, but honestly, you're buying junk and then you're pushing your junk out onto other people's junk. And that's not nice. Keep your junk to yourself. <laughs> please don't buy the fakes. Don't buy those big lots. If you're paying 50 cents, 75 cents a pin, I can pretty much guarantee you they are fakes and scrappers. Okay, so you've got a stock of pins. You're ready to trade. They're real pins. You're ready to go. You know what to look for out in the parks now so you don't get stuck with a fake one. How do you make sure you keep them safe? Well, a lot of people will do like my son did on this, and they like to walk around with the lanyards. Now, I don't particularly like walking around with lanyards with pins because it gets heavy. For example, my son's there, that lanyard weighs about five pounds with all the pins on it. It starts to weigh you down over the course of the day, plus you got the pins poking you in the chest and that and then with the backs, 
they will work loose. And so occasionally you'll have a back fall off and then the pin falls off and you've lost a pin. You can buy locking backs that will help hold them on, but then you've got to screw them on and unscrew them and it, it's a pain in the neck. So I generally don't carry pins this way. I like to keep them in a pocket on my camera bag that zips shut or a pocket on my jacket that zips shut so it keeps them safe, keeps them something soft so they're not banging and slamming against each other. And they're easy to get to that way. Other people like to put them into pin books. You can actually buy books that are designed specifically to hold pins. Kind of like this young lady showing off her pin collection at the Japan Pavilion in Epcot. She's got some figment pins there. Those are cool. You can also buy kind of a hip bag. Cast members will wear these sometimes or it's got a shoulder strap and this little bag that sits just right on your hip and it'll help hold your pins that way too. There's a lot of cast members that wear those and a lot of people like them as well. So you've got your pins in the park. You've got a way to carry them. What do you even get? Again, you've got a million designs to pick from. What do you choose? Pick something you like. I tend to keep mine reserved to certain subjects. For example, I really like Figment. I love Figment. So if I see a Figment pin, I'm probably going to go for it. I love Star Wars. When I worked at Disney, there really weren't Star Wars pins. It was a rare thing because Disney didn't own Star Wars at the time. That has changed. There's lots of Star Wars pins now. I also really like Chippendale pins. I love Chippendale, partially because they were some of the first characters I worked with who were obnoxious and goofy and fun. And so I had a blast with them. You can actually see I've got several Chip and Dale pins all sprinkled in through my collection. So that's another way to kind of pick out what you like. Find a design or a character or a subject that you're going to enjoy. I keep cast member pins from holidays and things that only cast members can buy kind of as a marker that you worked on that day. If you look at my other pins, I've got castles. I've got certain series that I have the whole collection of. So pick something that you're going to like and that's special for you. Even if it is just a pin that maybe you wouldn't normally collect, but it's just cool. Like I love this one from Inside Out where you can change the moods. And it's just a really neat pin. And I was actually given this by another cast member. I thought that is so cool. I love that pin. That's an awesome pin. And the neat thing too is when I actually met Joy and Sadness later at Epcot, that pin was a conversation starter. And we had a great time just pointing out the pin and talking about it. So there's another special thing that pins can do. So how do you trade pins? Well, let me try and cover it real quick for you. There's basically a few simple rules. To trade a pin with a cast member, it's gotta be a real Disney pin. Covered that already. Yes, trading with cast members can trade one pin at a time. You pick out a pin that they like and you do one at a time and you can do up to two pins per cast member per day. You walk up to the cast member, say, hey, can I see your pins? and they will hold their lanyard or their bag out where you can see them, and you can pick one and say, hey, I like that pin, that's cool, can I have that one? They will pull the pin off of their lanyard, put the back back on it, keep the back on your pin, and then you hold them out on the palm of your hand, and you just simply trade. Kind of like I'm doing in this video. <laughs> Yeah, it was sold out really quick, though. Yeah, I mean, you don't even know why they're here. Yep. I see him all of them. Because I was in Epcot today, and they have them all of them. Yes. Yeah, because they got some. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy your day. And you can see the whole interaction. Keep it friendly, be nice, be polite to the cast member. If you think that they're giving you a fake pin, you can mention it politely, but again, be nice. They may not know the difference. Many don't. A pin that's traded to the cast member can't be one they already have on their lanyard. If they've got that same pin on their lanyard, you can't trade it to them. Also, no money involved with pin trading. Now, if you see guests that are trading pins, guests are kind of free to make up their own rules. They tend to hang around at Epcot Magic Kingdom. If a guest asks to trade a pin, that's up to you. A cast member cannot say no to a trade for a legitimate pin, but a guest most certainly can. So look for what you're liking. Collect pins that you enjoy. That's a lot of information to help you get started on getting some good pins, some real pins. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy the look at some of my pins that I picked up on my way down there and some other pins that are in my collection because I have a blast trading pins. I hope you do too. Thanks so much for watching. 
If you enjoyed this video and this look at pin trading and how to recognize fakes, please don't forget to like and share the video. Post it out there with your friends and family so that they don't get caught by fake pins as well. I would love to hear your stories and comments about pin trading. Don't forget to leave those below. And thank you again for my patrons too. Appreciate so much. If you want to know more about Patreon, check the link down below in the description or at the end. Be sure to check out my Facebook page too and my store where you can get one of these really cool shirts. Thank you so much. I've already done a couple videos on pins. One which showed off my pin trading collection. I've had a... Ugh. I've done a couple videos in the past on pins and trading pins and shown off my pins a little bit. and So I wanted to... But, oh my goodness, <laughs> can't talk, can't get started, okay. <laughs> if I can pick it up. <laughs> Other ways that you can tell pins are magnetic is some of the fakes. Whoops. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button right there. If you'd like to see another great video of mine, there's a good one right there for you. And if you'd like to be like these wonderful people and support me on Patreon, hit that link right there. Thanks so much.